everyone, welcome to One Mike Night. The show is incredible today. Thank you all for joining. My guest today is a motivational speaker and he is a gratitude coach. Um, we're talking about gratitude and being thankful for life and he shares his personal journey with us. He's also got a book that's coming out on October 18th, so I urge you to check it out. It's going to be available on Amazon. So go to Amazon, you'll see the links for it in the notes of the show. So sit back. His name is Chris D.T. Gordon, and he's coming up next on Mike Knight. Welcome to another episode of One Mic Night, the podcast that brings you stories of artists and people on their journey, helping to guide, answer questions, and motivate you in life and the business. My name is Marcos Luis, you already know, and I'm back again, and I want to thank you guys all for joining me on this episode and joining me for the 17 years that I've been doing One Mic Night, so I appreciate it. If you're listening to the podcast on the audio, make sure you tip on over to the YouTube channel. We're live every Tuesday night. Hop in the live chat, throw up a few words, meet the person that we're talking to, and uh, learn a few things. We appreciate it. And thank you for everyone who's joined so far. My guest today is an educator, he's a motivational speaker, and he transforms lives using gratitude and helps them achieve in their own way. His name is Chris D.T. Gordon. Welcome to One Mike Night. Marcos, thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to talk with you today. My pleasure. Thank you for taking time. I know it's been hard and uh, we always got to make time for the things that are important. So thank you for jumping on the podcast here. My pleasure. Listen, I have questions. First question. <laughs> the first question is, who is Chris D.T. Gordon? Well, I could answer that with a a canned response i could repeat what you just said but i like to view myself in two eras there's the era of chris dt gordon or just chris gordon before march 18th 2015 and then there's the version of chris dt gordon that starts at march 18th 2015. Mm. so chris gordon before then was a seemingly average and ordinary 40-year-old husband and father of three. My wife, Becky, and I live in a small town in central Minnesota with our kids, Josh, Seth, and Anna. Becky and I are both teachers. She teaches high school in the local school district. I actually teach online. I've been teaching online since 2012, and... Even after March 18, 2015, I'm still teaching online. It's provided our family a lot of flexibility. And it's really nice to be able to help students while wearing slippers. Because they can't see that. <laughs> exactly. Exactly that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you can't teach comfortable, you know, I, I think you got to find a way to do that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Anyway. So, and we had our own interest. She played volleyball. I like to run. And as you could probably tell behind me, I'm a big geek. I have uh, the Ninja Turtles behind me. I actually have a picture of me and Weird Al Yankovic over here. I'm a, I'm a huge nerd and I've always has been. I, I always <laughs> have been. So that was life before March 18th, 2015. Ordinary geeks living life. But on that day, everything changed, but I didn't know it had at the time. I was helping Becky get our kids ready for school and daycare. She would run them in the minivan to where they had to go before she went up to the high school. 
So I would help her by loading the kids into the van. Mm-hmm. Well, our one of our twins was toddling about, just you know, taking their time. So I decided to help them out by picking them up and flying them back and forth toward the Tash garage. However, I veered too far to the right, and I scratched the back of my right hand on our exterior garage wall. I looked at it, and to quote one of my favorite movies of all time, "'Tis but a scratch." So it wasn't bleeding, no harm, no foul. So I put the twin into the car seat, kissed them all goodbye, and then they went on their way. So I went on my way back into the house to wash off my hand and start my day of online teaching. Three days later, I wake up and I see a lacrosse ball sized bump on my right elbow. I proceed to drive to the urgent care clinic here in town. The doctor looks at it, says it might be bursitis, which is an inflammation of your the bursa sac in our joints. Right. And he says to keep an eye on it. So I do. I go home and I keep an eye on this bump, which grows and grows and grows until my right arm is three times the size of my left. Are you serious? I I wish I were joking. The entire arm? The entire arm from my hand to my shoulder. Oh my. I look like the Incredible Hulk in mid-transformation. Oh my. And actually in the in the book I'm going to talk about, there's actually a picture of it. It dwarfs my left arm. Oh my it's, goodness. It, you know, if it weren't so life-threatening, it would have been it's hilarious. Right. You don't think of it in a life and death situation. So, of course, when I when Becky takes me to the uh, emergency room after finding a babysitter for the kids, they admit me because, hello, huge right arm. But as they're taking my vitals, they also found out th- they also find out that I am now septic. Oh my and gosh. I'm not sure what sepsis is. It's a reaction that the body has to a foreign agent entering it. One of the reactions that sept- sepsis can cause is a chemical being, pu- being pumped into the bloodstream to heal itself to combat however, yes yes however that can drop your blood pressure dangerously low shut down organs and essentially kill you so i had a ginormous right arm and poison coursing through my veins oh my god not the craziest saturday night i ever experienced <laughs> but easily top five so they keep me overnight for observation and it's in the morning the following morning When another attending doctor came up to me and said something I would never forget, Marcos. She says, Mr. Gordon, this is beyond us. We can do nothing more for you here. Where do you want to go? Well, after thinking about it for exactly a half second, I said, Mayo, as in the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota, which was Two, which is two hours to our east. And I said Mayo not only because it's the Mayo Clinic. It's like Beyonce or Prince. You just say Mayo. People know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But also because Becky's parents, Bill and D, live in Rochester. Okay. So I knew that Becky, the kids, and Max, the dog, would have a place to stay for the, I was sure, two or three days. This would resolve itself. They'd figure it out. It's Mayo. Of course. Yeah. yeah. I'll be back by Monday. (laughs) So they, uh, they take me to the municipal airport and load me up, fly me to Rochester. And they get me into another ambulance, take me to St. Mary's hospital, which is the flagship facility for the Mayo clinic system. And it's there that they diagnosed me with necrotizing fasciitis, also known as flesh-eating bacteria. Oh, my gosh. So, first of all, I'm horrified. Second of all, how, where, what, when, who? All the questions. All the questions, right? 
yeah, it's it, it basically it's a great uh segue into huh? Right. Uh, but yeah, so basically it was caused by Streptococcus progenies, which is a group A strep. And it was in the area at the time when I scratched my hand. Oh my gosh. And doctors would later say that there was a minuscule yet non-zero chance that I would get it, even though I had no core uh, comorbidities. I wasn't type two diabetic. I wasn't overly, you know, morbidly obese. There, there weren't any other huge health issues with me. I mean, the week before, I had run a 5K in less than 19 and a half minutes. Wow. So I was in pretty good shape. Wow. So for this to happen was, was a, 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 a I want to say miraculous, but it was, it was very rare. Rare. Yeah. I mean, definitely rare. itself, necrotizing fasciitis or NF only happens in 700 to 1200 cases annually. So in the United States, yeah. So out my, of 300 million people, it's considered very rare. And for it to happen to me is I should have played the lottery that day, basically. Yeah. It's like hitting, getting hit by lightning. What is, exactly. you know, what is, what are the chances that that could have happened somewhere along the route after you went to the hospital? I mean, you could, know, it's, it's hard to say. Yeah. Because, and, you know, I don't want to put this bug in your head, but, you know, we know a lot of times we go to the hospital and we end up getting something else <laughs> there that, that we didn't go in with. Yeah. You know, even though it's a place I, for healing. I really, I mean, we could go down, down that yeah. uh, road a little bit, but from the time I scratched my hand to the time the, the bump appeared on my elbow, the only other place I was than my house teaching in that three-day span was my wife and I went bowling with her friends uh, and, and colleagues on a Friday night. Maybe I twisted my arm a little differently hitting that 7-10 split. Right, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> but, you know, playing playing the what-if game isn't going to yeah. fix anything now, obviously. Right. So, it, it, after, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. Go ahead. So well, I was going to say, well, they, so in in the time that, you know, the arm was getting larger and larger, what was going through your mind? I mean, did you maybe not notice how much more it was proportionally bigger? Well, you know, we were, or, you know, like I said, keep an eye on it. And I, I'm wondering, OK, I've never had bursitis. Right. Yeah. I didn't know. I'm thinking, <laughs> what, does it get bigger than get smaller? Does it right. inflate? Am I supposed to use my bike pump? <laughs> you know. <laughs> If I guess I would have thought the same thing. Yeah. A... Right. Sound? Yeah. I didn't know. <laughs> so it was, it was one of those things that, I mean, and again, in hindsight, we could have said we should have gone to the, the hospital sooner, but at the same time, ultimately they didn't know what was going on either. And so, you know, it is, it's just one of those things that it's whatever happened, happened has taken me to where I am today. Very true. Very true. And so how does that impact your life? I mean, you, you go through a, a place where, you know, it's, it's almost like you're either going to lose your arm or you're going to die. It's a, it's a death call. Yeah. Well, at the time that they diagnosed me and took me in for my first surgery, they were looking at seriously amputating my right arm because when they went in for that first surgery, they had to debrief, which means clear out all the infected skin, tissue, and bacteria in my arm. And when they did that, they found that the infection had gone so far down into my forearm that they were certain, Marcos, that they would have to amputate. It wasn't a question. Oh my God. And what? at the time, they also gave me a 30% 30, 30 chance of survival. And that's that and sounds like a rapid... Uh, amount of uh, rapid thing happening in a short amount of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. it was very, it, it was that the first few days I was told that Becky and then my brother who flew in from Michigan 
as soon as he heard what was going on with me, were getting. They were getting updates almost uh, every hour. Jeff, my brother, sometimes stayed overnight in the hospital so he could receive the latest updates on my condition. And I say that that's what they were told was because I was in a coma for five days. That was my next question. Wow. Yeah, so because they, I had to go through so many surgeries that included having a 15 inch by four inch flap of skin taken from my left thigh and placed on my right hand and forearm to save my to save my entire arm. And since this is, this is my thigh on my hand, I call this my thand, <laughs> copyright pending. <laughs> However, when they removed that flap of skin, it also left a gaping hole in my left leg. And as I said before, I'm a runner, former soccer player. So my thighs are sizable considering my body, my, my, my body shape. So they couldn't close the wound naturally. So they had to remove a the vastus lateralis, which is the outermost quadricep muscle in your thigh. Oh, and wow. then insert knobs on either side of the wound and then install a shoestring type contraption called a Jacob's ladder on the inside. So over time, they would tighten the knobs to close the wound in my oh. leg. Oh my gosh. Wow. And then there's the, the matter of all the exposed skin and tissue on my upper right side. So they had to use a skin graft harvester or just imagine a cheese slicer on steroids. Big thing like this. They ran it up and down my, my legs, my thighs, and my back to gain enough samples to put on those infected areas. And oh, so it wow. looks like someone had a someone was having a re revenge waxing oh. on my thighs and my back, as you can see strips all over strips those of areas. Skin. Just yeah. Dark white. Wow. That's amazing. Well, I got to say one thing, thank goodness for technology and medicine, you know, yes, um, grateful for that, for sure. What, what were you feeling at the time? What was going through your mind? Physically, I was feeling nothing because ketamine is a very powerful painkiller. <laughs> <laughs> and I was on all kinds of other medications as well. And that was a struggle in itself for the, you know, for the, my, the next couple of months I was in the hospital. But when I woke up and I could spend a whole other podcast talking about my hallucinations and I, ha I woke up to one right then, but I'm going to skip past that for now. Becky, Jeff, and my dad, Bill, were filling me in on what it had happened in, you know, during the time I was out. And even then I hadn't imagined it was five days. They didn't ever talk. I don't, I don't remember them saying you were out for five days. I just remember me being awake and then uh, waking up and they were telling me basically what had gone on, but I could see I had a huge cast on my right arm that basically covered all of my arm, except for my pinky, I am you can leave my pinky, my other four fingers and my thumb were, uh, were exposed. My other three fingers, my thumb were exposed. My pinky was covered up. I had questions about that. And then I noticed that large mound where my left leg was, which is where they had to install the knobs and everything. So... They filled me in, but they didn't want to wear me out. So they left after 20 minutes, a half hour, so I could get some sleep. That didn't happen, though. I stayed awake the basically the entire night. I nodded off here and there. But mostly, my mind was racing with questions to which I had no answers. I was asking myself, what was I going to be able to do when I fully recovered if... I fully recovered. What was my mindset going to be like? How was I going to handle, you know, relationships with Becky, the kids, sure, or the family an, members, an assessment friends, of colleagues? Everything. Yeah. How was you know how was everyday life going to go? 
what would our what were our fan, finances going to look like after this and all those questions developed in what i call personal bacteria all the physical bacteria was removed by the doctors all the dangerous physical bacteria but i had this personal bacteria in the form of those questions and when i had no answers i mean you may maybe you felt like this before marcos when you have no answers and all questions you start finding yourself going into a negative spiral sure yeah and I, while I am usually a pretty optimistic guy, positive guy, this was something I've never faced before. And with having no questions or no answers and all questions, it just started sending me down that negative spiral. Luckily, though, I didn't have time to ruminate on those questions for long. Because during one of our conversations early in my hospitalization, Becky started telling me, about how people in our com various communities were stepping in to help us. Mm. Our neighbors were keeping an eye on the house, snow blowing our walkways and our driveways. The local law enforcement were driving by the house to keep an eye on it because when you live in a small town, the phrase flesh eating bacteria spreads just as quickly as the actual bacteria quickly. does. Yeah. Everyone I can imagine my situation. Yeah. So, and then we had <clears throat> friends and colleagues stopping by the house in Rochester to visit with Becky and the kids and to take Max for walks. Uh, they dropped by food and toys to play with the kids. As I mentioned before, my brother Jeff flew from Michigan and stayed a week and a half in Rochester and bought me an iPad, which actually uh, played a big part in my recover, my mental recovery. In fact, we still have that thing eight years later. It still works really well. Wow. Uh, and a colleague uh, or a former classmate of Becky's even started a GoFundMe account to help offset the wages I lost because I was in the hospital for over two months, which was the same as an entire quarter of school. Wow. So when Becky told me all of this information, I felt that personal bacteria wash away. Yeah. And I was going to say, was, how does a sense of community coming in to help you? What does that do for you? Well, it filled me with such gratitude that I developed what I now call the attitude of gratitude. And it had me asking three new questions, but I had answers for these questions. <laughs> so the first question was, what good things do I have in my life? So I'm going to ask you, Marcos, what good things do you have in your life? If I were to ask you that question, mm -hmm. what would you say? Yeah, sure. Um, the best thing I have in my life is family, friends, um, actually everything. I wake up in the morning and I'm thankful. Just uh, people have a huge network of people who care about me, who love me, who support me in no matter what I do. Um, so, yeah. And that's what I did too. And those, that's a fantastic answer. I'm so happy you have all that in your life. But I also asked myself, well, those are big things. What about the small things? What about those sure. seemingly insignificant parts of our lives that bring us that daily dose of joy? So, I thought first of the Netflix show Daredevil, which premiered around the time I was in the hospital. So I was able to binge watch Daredevil on that iPad that my brother bought me. <laughs> That's funny. I told, you, I, told, I told you to come back. It came in handy. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I just That's love funny. binge watching that show between her surgeries and, you know, just to keep my mind off of my own struggles. And then I thought about, Things like, well, I'm thankful that the sun isn't shining in my face in the middle of the day because the window was situated in my hospital room that even at high noon, even when it's brightest point, the sun wasn't shining in my eyes. And I know that sounds weird, but when you are confined to a singular space for an extended period of time, a period of time you are sick and tired of asking people for everything. Right. Yeah. So yeah. not being able, not having to ask someone 
for one more thing was a godsend. And then there's the hospital pizza. (laughs) Marcos, what is your relationship with hospital food? Uh, I haven't really been in the hospital, but I know of it and it doesn't look too, too tasty. Yeah, you I, know, I do they, have a special relationship with pizza, though. Okay. My pizza's got to be good. Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah. So, yeah, most people's uh, opinions of hospital food ranges from it didn't make me sick to how can you feed this and call yourselves human? You know, <laughs> so it, there's a wide range. The hospital pizza at, at St. Mary's was phenomenal. Wow. Okay, I would put it up there with the top five pizzas I've ever had. I'm shocked. That's not the answer I expected. Yeah, I know, right? Wow. It could be because at the time I ate it first, I hadn't had pizza in about a month. <laughs> but I still remember it and I'm still thankful for it to this day because of the happy memory it gave me. And so every day, now all the time, I'm looking around and I view things. Not for their market value, but I value, I I see them as how they help me during my day, how they bring me joy, they make me happy. And I find that I might, I might not be a rich guy, but I am wealthy beyond measure. Yes. You know, for example, I look at here, uh, look at this transformer <laughs> I got. I, were you a transformer kid? I was, yeah. Yeah, I got Blaster yep. here. I absolutely love <laughs> the fact that Transformers are back and they can make the trans, you know, make them more articulate in their movements. And so I'm thankful for the the joy that I get by seeing this guy and transforming him once in a while. I look at uh, my door and I'm thankful for door hinges because yeah. they, they allow us to have privacy when we need it. Yes, and be able to walk through walls essentially. And I'm also thankful for things like, I don't know, my right armpit. Yeah. Which you're wondering what? But because, see, my upper right side of my body is covered in skin grafts. Skin grafts are non-porous, which means they don't sweat. They don't sweat, yeah. I haven't had to use deodorant on my right armpit for about eight years. That's (laughs) brilliant. (laughs) And the thing is, you may not think that's a big deal, but it makes me laugh. It makes me happy. That's Once hilarious. In a while, I catch myself doing this, like putting, trying to put deodorant on. I'm like, what am I doing? That is hilarious. And I say that because I am one of those people who sweats a lot. And I always think, gosh, I wish I wasn't sweating. I wish I wasn't sweating. I'm probably sweating this shirt out as we sit here right now. Yeah. Like I'm one of those people. So mm-hmm. to hear you say that really is kind of refreshing it makes me think yeah i mean i have pictures of me that when i get back from a run if i'm wearing like a heather gray t-shirt and you know gray really shows up you know really gets dark when you get it wet is this there is a there is a stark line going down my back to where skin grafts start because really? you have one half of one me half. is wet and one half of me is bone dry Wow, that's so interesting to say. I should send that picture to you sometime. That's it is a interesting. Crazy picture. Yeah, yeah. Because I can't even wear gray because of that yeah. reason, light gray. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so it's finding everyday things that make me happy and make me make me thankful that I have that in my life to do the work I need to do. And so I think of these as gratitude goggles. Have you ever seen the movie Free Guy? No. Marcos with with Ryan Reynolds. It came out maybe a couple years ago. Well, basically, this is not a spoiler. This is basically the plot of the movie. Guy, the Ryan Reynolds character, is an NPC, a non playable character. Well, one day he's living his life in the video game, and he finds these goggles, these glasses. He puts them on, and all of a sudden. He sees everything that a a player can see, all the power-ups, all the weapons, all the missions, all the side, all the little side things that we see as gamers that an NPC shouldn't see. Right. 
And so I call these put on your put putting on your gratitude goggles. Gotcha. Because when you put on your gratitude goggles, you look at things differently. You look at them as how does this make me happy? And so a thing like say these scissors. Yeah, these are just scissors. But if you don't have your uh, your gratitude goggles on, but you put them on, you say, "Hey, I remember this time they helped me cut that piece of paper." And I'm thankful that they were able to do that because I am horrible at ripping paper with my hands. And this so, makes it so much easier. So, so it's it's kind of a, a, a mindset that you have yes. to change in the way you're looking at certain things. Yes. And in fact, mm. I have this phrase I developed. It's, uh, it goes, where your thoughts go, your mind and body will follow. Hmm. If you think positive thoughts, you'll soon develop a positive mindset and that will lead you to taking positive action. Very true. Very true. <clears throat> that so, goes right along with the law of attraction. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I I try to wear my, my gratitude goggles all the time. Even when I'm in a place that I don't have any, I don't own anything. Like at the, let's say, say the supermarket, I'm thankful that the shelves are stocked and we don't have to wait in line for toilet paper. Right. Like we did a couple of years ago. Yeah, we sure did. <laughs> yeah. I'm thankful that the the store has dark chocolate M&Ms because that's one of my weak, weaknesses right now is I love me some dark chocolate M&Ms. Right. I'm thankful that the, the shopping cart has four non-squeaky wheels. And even if it did have a squeaky wheel, that wheel still helps you get going. It Where sure does. Go? Still helps you. Yeah. And so that is the first question I asked myself was, what are some good things in my life? The next question I asked myself was, who am I thankful for in my life? And when we ask ourselves that question, the, the big groups come into mind, the people who share our faith, our family, our friends, our colleagues. When I asked myself that question, of course, you know, the big groups came to mind. But then I thought about, well, certainly the nurses play a big part in that with me in the hospital. Yeah. And one story I love telling is that when you're in the hospital for a number of months, they often put up a sign, a, a poster in your room. It's called the getting to know you poster. One question on that poster often will be favorite movie. Now, Marcos, you heard me quote Money Python. Right. You see the Ninja Turtles behind me. I could talk about, and I showed you a Transformer. And you know I love Star Wars and the MCU. So you could probably guess what my favorite movie is. That's right. Blazing Saddles. <laughs> I love Blazing Saddles. Love it. Yeah, me too. Yep, love so it. So I, I put Blazing Saddles as my favorite movie. Well, one Monday morning, Chris, the head nurse, comes running to my room. She almost knocks over one of the IV stands. And she's sputtering. She's saying something, but she can't get the words out fast enough. She said, she said Chris, I saw this in a garage sale bin. I bought it, and here it is. Wow. It was a used DVD copy of Blazing Saddles. Wow. Let me check my DVDs over there. So, do you, I have <laughs> nothing more to her That's... than uh, a, a to, I'm, and I, I'm an item on her to-do list. I'm part of her job. Wow. But she thought enough of me to not only recognize that DVD in a garage sale bin, but then she went and bought it for me out of her own money. I that, love that DVD, that particular dvd copy because i have another one i've been watching for years is a prized possession of mine not because of its market value but because of the love and friendship in which it was given right and so from someone you didn't even really know yeah no i mean we had the same name and she was nice and she helped you know make sure i was getting my meds on time make sure my I had uh, dressings done every day because for oh, a couple of months, nurses had to change the dressing on my arm 
as the skin grafts were healing and adhering to my skin, they have they had to come in every night and unwrap it, wash the area, and they had to use a special cleanser called Hibiclens, which this is this is how strong it is. You're not supposed to use it above the neck. Oh, it is serious stuff. Wow. So they had to do all these dressings every day. And that's what she was in charge of making sure my, my wounds were getting dressed. I was taken care of. So, and I was, I mean, I was, I tried to be a good patient, but even on my best behavior, I'm a handful. So but, that, that also says a little bit about her too. You know what I mean? The act of kindness and the gratitude that you, you, you had for what she did. You know, yes. And I think part of the gratitude, yeah, part of the gratitude is, is the feeling that you have, the emotional feeling that you have after, I don't know, after, after you recognize something's been done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I don't know if that makes sense. By sharing my appreciation of that, by sharing my gratitude for her, obviously it lets her know how I feel. Right. But it also increases the chance that she will do this for others. And who wouldn't benefit from having an awesome nurse like Chris serving them? Right. That even on her day off, she's thinking of how can I make the lives of my patients better? We and- also know that the mental also helps the physical. So mm-hmm. if you're in a state of happiness and gratitude, it affects your physical hopefully to help heal you better yes yes it, it's all yeah. entwined it's all entwined yep and there's a uh a process i developed which i call the triple a that helps helps f- uh, facilitate this and i call it the triple a because it actively augments your appreciation of someone mm. so what i first do the first step is i take someone out of one of my various social circles, you know, we all have social circles based mm-hmm. on family, friends, occupation, interest, what have you. So I take that person out of that social circle temporarily. And then the second step is I look at that person and I view all the positive things that this person does for the world around them without that tether between me and them. Hmm. Because I want to see, I want to see them on their own accord, not just how they benefit me. And then the third step is I put them back into our social circle and I get to enjoy the fact that I have this fantastic person in one of my social circles. And I like to use my wife, Becky, as an example. Yes, she's my wife, my (laughs) partner, my best friend. But when I take her out of that social circle that we share, I see that she's a loving mom a fantastic daughter and sister, a brilliant teacher, a great athlete, a well-read historian, a, a it's just big of a geek as I am, though she keeps it close to the vest. And she's just a benefit and a shining light in the community overall. Now I put her back, back in that social circle that we share. And yeah, She's still all of those things. But now she's also my wife, my partner, my best friend to boot. This is, I I love this. I love this. I love this. Say the acronym again. It's triple A, but what is it? Triple A. Yeah. To actively augment your appreciation of someone. Bravo. I love that. I love it. I got, yes. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, the beautiful thing is with that, Marcos, is that, yes, we can use it with those to whom we are closest, our good friends. But I challenge you to practice the AAA on someone you might not know very well, or yeah. maybe even someone you may not particularly get along with. Because we can't be best friends with everyone. We really can't. No. However, even though we can't, always be friends with everyone we can be friendly friendly to yes someone mm-hmm. and by viewing how that person positively benefits the world around them without the strained relationship we might have or zero relationship if you don't know that person 
you can at least appreciate that you know this positive person and you might develop a little more respect for them. And who knows, you might become friends, but we can at least develop a greater level of respect and appreciate that that person is connected to us in some way. And if they can't even be our friend, perhaps they could be a friend to someone else. Yep. And, and, and the key part of that is, you know, you're sort of assessing the person, but you're looking for the positive things, mm-hmm. appreciating the characteristics, not necessarily looking for the bad things about them, but you want to appreciate the positive attributes they have yes yeah. gotcha exactly because i mean we can find we, we we do find negativity all around us all the time and all around us yeah it, it does not take a lot of work to find negativity but it's being able to accentuate the positive which is key gotcha so i asked myself what i was thankful for in my life i asked myself who i was thankful for in my life Then the last question was, how can I give someone else a reason to be grateful? In the hospital, there really wasn't a lot I could do. My job in the hospital was to recover. And I could respond to people online or maybe, I know I did this a couple of times. I sent people a payment on PayPal if I knew they were struggling or something. But I really couldn't do much physically. However, when I started my post-hospital life when I was discharged, I started taking action. I started running again. And on my runs or walks, I would pick up trash that was on the road or in the side on the sidewalk or in someone's yard without getting too trespassy. <laughs> I would uh snow blow my drive um, the uh, the driveways and walkways of my neighbors. In fact, I over this past summer one of our neighbors is a single guy and he works in another town and mm-hmm. he's also going into grad school. So he's really busy. It turned out to be a, a really uh, good growing summer for grass in his yard. And so <laughs> sometimes I would look over and his grass, his the grass in his yard would get really long. And I didn't want people making some false assumptions about what was happening with him. So I would wheel my electric mower over. Yes, I said electric mower because I am not a mechanically inclined person by (laughs) any means. As long as I could keep from mowing the uh, electrical electrical cord, I'm good. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I would mow his yard, (laughs) and I did it a couple times. About a month ago, I hear this knock at the door, and it's the it's the neighbor, and he gives me this card. He says, "You know, I was really busy." He tells me how he had the job and he's going through uh, grad school and I just never had time, but thank you for being such a great neighbor and helping me out. And I, I didn't Beautiful. even tell him I had done that. I didn't leave a note or anything. I just, I went and did it. Someone else might've told him, but it's by doing things for others and seeing what good we can do in the world that will help others develop that gratitude. Yeah. And so it can be mowing someone's lawn. It could be picking up the trash. It could be holding a door for someone. And we, it could be you know, any little thing. It, we're holding a door for someone. We are stopping our world. So someone else can progress with theirs. And they may not seem like a big deal, but Marcos, as you and I know, at any given moment, Someone could be having the worst day of their life. Yes. Yes. And if we could help them just by holding a plank of wood so they can walk through the doorway, at least we make it or make their day a little bit better. And I also experienced uh, a situation this, this summer when I went running in Missouri, I was visiting family and I was running one way and I saw this lady running the other way. And I saw on her shirt the phrase mischief managed. Now I saw your eyebrows go up. Do you know what that means? Um, no, but the two words together could mean a lot of things. Well, in particular, a lot of my H, H- uh, my HB fans, HP fans are going crazy. That's a line from Harry Potter. Okay. I don't know. That's a Harry okay. Potter reference. I, okay. 
And so I said, great shirt. Cause my, I love Harry Potter. My, my, my kids and I read the books together. And she said, thank you. She went on her way. Well, I come back and I see her again. And I, uh, I say, have a great day. She says, thank you. Uh, I hope you do too. And then I say, always which is another harry another potter harry reference potter. <laughs> and she got the biggest smile and laughed so loud i could hear it clear across the other side of the street i like that and again we don't know what it's, people are dealing with every day you don't that i mean that laugh might have she might have forgotten it by the time she got home but who knows maybe she's going through a tough time and by me recognizing her fandom, what she likes, and making reference to it, maybe that was a bright spot in her day. And so by recognizing what people like, and even if we don't like it ourselves, but by commending them on sharing themselves with what they wear, maybe if they make a reference that we pick up on, by showing them we value them through how they share themselves in the world, they're, they're going to be more willing to do that, especially if it's in a positive way. A positive way. Isn't that, I mean, isn't it basically about human connection? And I feel like we've lost that over the years. So many people have lost the basic human connection, being in tune, talking, listening, then responding. Um, you know, the little things like you said, opening the door. If you see someone coming with something heavy, just open the door. Allow them in, help them out, give them that one second, you know, that it will help advance them in some way. It takes nothing out of, you know, your, you, from you, it should make you happy mm -hmm. that you could help someone. I think we've yeah. lost that somewhere along the way. Yeah. And, you know, going back to the reference to Harry Potter, even if you don't know what something means, even if someone's wearing a, a shirt or a hat that has some kind of symbol on it. Ask them. About Ask them. It. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Hey, what does that mean? And you know, when you when they explain it, you you know share that you you know that maybe if that's something you that would interest you, say something. Hey, that that sounds awesome. I have to check that out. Or hey, I'm happy that makes you happy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, just by reckon as you said, making that connection and recognizing what makes people happy and sharing your appreciation for their happiness right is something that we all are capable of doing at no cost exactly. it's basically no cost i mean what does it take for you to if you're at the supermarket and the cashier has a scarf on hey nice scarf instantly you've made some sort of connection and your experience there is going to be a lot greater believe me their yes. experience will be great indeed and so so I took these three questions and I took the letters T from think, A for acknowledge, you want to acknowledge others you appreciate in your life, and G for give, and I make the word tag. Now, Marcos, I can't speak for, for you, but I, I know from personal experience that playing tag by yourself is boring and a little embarrassing. <laughs> It's when we involve others and invite them to play that tag gets more, more exciting and it becomes more memorable. Sure. And so that's why I ask people to play tag with others. Let, you know, share your appreciation of them and things that you like, give them other reasons to be grateful because chances are, if you help them feel good and develop their gratitude, they're going to want to do it themselves with other people. Right. And that's just going to spread. It's like a good bacteria. It's yes. going to spread and spread and spread the more we do it. You're right. You're right about that for sure. So you do motivational speaking. Yes. What, um, so sort of in the vein of what we're doing now, is this how you address your, your, your audience? Very, uh, in sort of a, sometimes very similar. Mm -hmm. I speak to, uh, right now, I'm speaking mainly to students uh, ranging from uh, kindergarten to high school, and I also speak with teachers. And so it's about creating a positive uh, school climate, 
It's about creating those positive relationships, not only with the school itself, but with inter interpersonal communication, interpersonal relationships, helping people develop gratitude, not only gratitude and positivity, but also resilience. Because when I was going through my own recovery, I discovered that, wow, when I see so many things around me that I'm grateful for, I feel more positive. And then with that positive positivity, I felt, wow, I wonder what I can do with my life. And mm. a, a conversation I had with my plastic surgeon really got me thinking because I asked him, I said, so what am I, what am I able to do now? What are my limits? And my doctor, Dr. Kareem Bakri, he says, well, Chris, you're the first marathon runner I've ever met who's contracted NF. So you tell us. <laughs> I felt a light switch go on in my head, Marcos. I thought, there okay, you go. challenge accepted. So yeah. I started, I started stepping up and challenging myself. I started running again. And since my hospitalization, I have set five personal running records, set or tied. I uh I've tied my 5K running record. I set a 10K running record, a 10 mile running record, a half marathon running record. And as of May of this year, I bested my marathon personal running record by 29 minutes. Wow. Well I went done. From a 345 to a 316. Well done. Thank you. That's I, and big. I even uh, placed 17th overall in the marathon I ran. Unfortunately, I was two and a half minutes shy of making it for Boston. Oh, but that's all right. the, the day I found out that I wasn't going to be able to run in Boston, I signed up for another marathon. I'm going to run a much, a much flatter marathon uh, next May. It's actually on May 4th. Okay. So I'm going to have to wear a Star Wars shirt. <laughs> so... I started running again. I also joined my my older son in Taekwondo. And as of January 2022, I'm a first degree black belt in Taekwondo. Wow, that's big. So this Thank is you. I love this because this is this is, you know, a story of not of defeat, but of triumph. Mm -hmm. You know, you go through some dark times. And isn't it funny how when we go through the dark times, we find something the light comes out of it and it's a new beginning for us in a different way. Yes. You yeah, know, indeed, because we get, you know, whenever we are faced with a challenge, we can either go the low road or the high road. You know, right. like I said, where your thoughts go, your mind and body will follow. Right. It, and we said also, it's very easy to find a negative in any situation. It is. I could have sat, I could have laid in that hospital bed looking at my mangled right arm and my Frankenstein monster left leg and thought, well, this is it. Yep, I survived. Yep. That's my big, that's my big uh, accomplishment. Doctors said I can only feed myself with my right arm. That's as far as I'm going. I can do, in fact, I did yesterday, 27 pull-ups. Wow. Now I might look like a parenthesis because hey. of the skin grafts are so tight. They kind of curve my body, but I can do them right? because I didn't accept the negativity or the limits they gave me. I set my own limits. You set your own limits. And so here's the thing. It's two things. One, it's uh, the supportive community. Like we said, the people that we surround ourselves with to help you, but two, how do we, you know, make sure that our mind is not in the negative and that we think about the positive we have to change our mindset how did how do we do it how did you do it what's well, the answer you know it's i you know being as being a comic book guy i would love to say that the scratch of my hand gave me superpowers i mean this is quite the that's, origin a, fun, that's story. a fun way to look at it yeah yes so it's, it's quite the origin story that i have and actually, that's a that is a a way I frame a lot of my talks to uh, st uh, to students, especially the younger students. They love mm -hmm. to hear about superheroes, but it's all about daily action. It's all about every day. Okay, what is good in my life? What challenges do I have in my life? 
what's positive about those challenges. And actually, that's what led me to write my first book here from Survivor to Striver. And it's a combination memoir and six-month gratitude journal that has uh, daily prompts. It has weekly prompts. Being a teacher, I also have to put in uh, baseline assessments because we teachers we love our assessments. <laughs> so we have a baseline, a midpoint, and final assessment. But the assessments aren't to give you a label. They're just to give you an idea of where you are in your gratitude journey. That's it. And so... I share a lot of anecdotes from my struggles in the hospital, the story of me running that marathon in May, my Taekwondo journey. I even talk about, I'm not sure if you remember this, Marcos. Remember in 1990, uh, they had the Nintendo World Championships? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I I tell a story about that. Okay. In here. And so uh, this is one way to help people to increase that daily gratitude and to help them see the positivity, that light that you were talking about in the darkness. In the darkness. And I think the one thing to remember too is on the journey, you didn't didn't run the marathon the very next day, right? (laughs) There's no way. It's almost impossible. It's impossible. Yeah. I mean, I'm laughing because the the day I was discharged, I went for a run. You went for a run, really? I went for a run the day, I, the ten minutes after the nurse, the uh, the home therapy nurse left for the last time. I went for a mile run. Good for and you. When my watch signified that I had run a mile, I said a very bad word, and I was gasping for breath. My body was burning, but as I was struggling to to hobble back home, I realized that. It was the worst mile of my life, but I still ran it. And the best mile at the same time, yes. because look at where you are, right? Yes. And it if was I could one run step. one mile, mm-hmm. I know I can run two. Right. And that turned into 26.2. That's exactly what I'm saying. It was the first step in getting to the 26 miles. And you yes. had the positive mindset. So you went out, whether they told you you could do it or not, you went ahead and did it. And that was part of the the steps to get you to the 26 miles. Exactly. And it's, and like you said, I couldn't run a marathon that, that day. Right. I couldn't run a marathon in the first year. I just didn't have the training. I didn't have that foundation because of my injuries. I had to build my body up. Build your body. Yeah. But by daily practice of gratitude, ex, you know, appreciating those around me, and also helping others when they needed the help, I was able to create that foundation for myself so I could not only run a marathon, but PR by almost a half hour. And now my next goal is to not only qualify for Boston in this next marathon, but, and I'm saying this out loud, so you can hold me to it. I'm going to run it under three hours. And this is the other thing that I was going to say. It's you setting the goals for yourself. And that's part of the journey. So that's why you have the gratitude book. Every day you're writing, you're thankful. And you're writing, you're setting your goals for the next day or for the following day or following week or long-term goals. You know, our goals might change along the way, but we still have to have something that we're aspiring to. Yes. And that's what you're doing. Where can we get the book? Is it something that we can... Get on well, um, fine or it's gonna. I I I'm, and I don't know when this will air, but it will be available on Amazon on October eighteenth. Okay, for uh, print book, uh, print book and ebook as well. Very good. Yep, and so uh, you know the ebook will have the the uh, they have will have the journal pages, but you'll have to print them out, but. The uh, the print book has uh, everything in here, uh, and I am I'm just really happy that this is able is will be able to help people increase their gratitude and positivity. So you can find that at, at Amazon. It should be also available in physical bookstores like Barnes and Noble. And again, that's October 18th that it goes on. October 18th. And we can go to your website to find out more information. I think you have a few things on there too that gives gives us a little bit of access some downloads too, right? 
Yep. Yep. So yeah. uh, if you go to chrisdtgordon.com, it that will uh, show you my it's my speaking website. Gives you an idea of what I've been doing. You can uh, get some free downloadables there as well. And you can also find me on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, I'm trying to think about threads under Chris DT Gordon and YouTube as well. Chris, YouTube Chris channel. DT Gordon. Good. I love that. Anything else we should be looking for in the, the future, near future, we, besides the book? Besides you know, the, I'm the, uh, working the, on the, a the record a time on the marathon. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you know, I, I will, I'll be posting about that. So if you uh, follow me on Instagram or Facebook, I'll be talking about the marathon training. But I will be working on a video course to help people increase their gratitude. Love if it. That's how they like to learn. Love it. And I'm just looking for places to speak. Uh, I spoke recently at a Yellow Ribbon event. Yellow Ribbon is the uh, Suicide Prevention and Awareness uh, uh, organization. So I, I've been speaking there. I'm speaking at a couple teachers or uh, teachers conferences here in a couple of weeks. And I'm always looking to share my message with schools and organizations to help them increase the gratitude, positivity, and resilience. I love that. I have something to speak to you about uh, off camera too. So, and you may want to be a part okay. of it, but we can definitely talk about that. So everyone, please make sure you follow Chris DT Gordon. You can go to the website. It's chrisdtgordon.com. All the links to the social media is on there. Facebook, Instagram, his email, same name at gmail.com. Slide him a DM. And like I said, you may see him and I doing something in the future. We're going to talk about that afterwards. Thank you for coming on One Mike Night. Your story. Thank you for sharing your story. Please come back any, any time. My I appreciate pleasure, it. Marcos. Something else. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Everybody, make sure you follow the show at One Mike Night. One Mike Night is spelled O N E M I C N I T E. Join the Facebook community. That's where we talk about things. You can post things on the Facebook page. And you can follow me at Marcos Luis, M A R C O S L U I S. I'm on everything. Any questions, slide me a DM on Instagram. Thank you for joining me. Also, join us on YouTube, as I said, and check out my store where you can find some of my merch. The One Mike Nine mug is already here. Thank you guys for joining. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.